you have to introduce a bit of algebra. Okay, so now I'm going to describe, explain the difference between studentized and standardized. Story so far, even if the assumptions on the error term or disturbance term in your model holds, you will find that the variance of the residuals is not necessarily constant. It's actually equal to this. So it's only equal to constant if this HII is the same for all across all observations. What's this HII measures? It's measure is the leverage of point I. Um, to make it easier, why do I let's just use one I to point that's observation I am talking about. Alright? And H I is between zero and one. So obviously if this H I is the same for all observations then the variance of the residuals will be constant, but typically you'll find that it won't be the same across all observations. And what this is saying then that what we've got here is the variance of the residual will be made up of sigma square and sigma square is the variance of the true not this true error term I mean error term why do I say true error term the error term which is different to the residual times by the square root of 1 minus this leverage point for point I, observation I. Now when we're calculating the standardized one, recall I said that what we actually do is we take the residual and we're going to divide it by the square root of the variance. Similarly with student ties, we're going to take the residual divided by the square root of the variance of the residual. The differences lie now because this HI we know we can calculate because HI depends on the explanatory variables, in other words the X's which we have data for so we can calculate this. We don't need to know, there is actually a formula for this but there's no need to know that. That would just simply know that this is a function of the X's which we can get so we can get this for sure. Sigma square, as you've seen in other stats problems, usually is the problem because sigma square is the is the variance of the error term and we don't know this. This is the population variance. So we have to estimate it. And this is where the difference lies between the standardized and student. For the standardized one, we just estimate it in the usual way. It's equal to the residual sum of squares divide by n minus the number of parameters in the mean part of the model parameters so intercept minus the, intercept 1 plus number of partial slope parameters right I've drawn a table here that points out the differences between the three residuals and also as I'm writing this I suddenly think to myself that I've made a mistake and I have so well then you spotted it, that's not a square root I'm thinking of the standard deviation variance of the residual even though assumptions of regression are satisfied is sigma squared times 1 minus leverage point i sorry about that so variance of, I mean the residuals here then we'll have the raw residuals, the straight one which is measured in the units of measurement of your uh, of your dependent variable the standardized one which is like the z-score, so we take the residual divided by the square root of that variance so it's going to be sigma hat times the square root of 1 minus the leverage point, point i where well, I've told, told you that the sigma square sigma hat square is equal to RSS, the usual formula RSS divided by n minus number of params in your model the mean part, mean model Studentized one, we can see formulas are similar, is the residual divided by the square root of the variance. But now instead of sigma hat, you've got sigma uh, this notation. And what I mean by this notation is how you get it, this is that you estimate the model but with the i observation omitted and you fit your model and then you obtain the um, estimate of the variance 
in the same way RSS, but RSS now will be without the i observation divided by n minus number of parameters in your model. All right, so just to bring us back, there's quite a lot of detail there, bring us back to the central key idea, key result is that, yeah, if we're plotting the residuals, you're better off doing the standardized or the studentized one. So if the residuals are normally distributed, we expect about 95% of the observations to fall in the band of plus or minus two. For the raw residuals, we can't, we have no idea what is large and what is small because it depends on the units of the measurement. Standardized studentized, we can expect plus or minus two. And so it's easy to determine whether that any outliers or not. Just notice that also if you look at this plot, there's every strong evidence, uh, well, they're suggestive, highly suggestive of heteroscedasticity in the model. The variance is increasing of the observations. Notice that the pattern is the same if you use standardized and studentized one. So whether you can use this, the raw residuals to look for heteroscedasticity, you might think it could be okay. Uh, now I'm stretching a bit in this video, but if we look at the formula here, heteroscedasticity is the case if this bit here, the variance of the error term, is non-constant over observations. We observe that if this is constant and this isn't constant, it changes and this will change. If this is not constant and this is approximately constant, then this will be varying. And if they're both not constant, then this will be varying. So if we look at the residual plot, there is more than one way in which uh, we, can s we can lead to um, the variances of the residuals being different. And so from the residual plot, it's hard to pick out that it's only this that differs and not this, because for heteroscedasticity, it's this that we're looking at. Okay, well, I hope that's been helpful. I think uh, I have a feeling that I said a bit too much at the end, but just take away this idea and you'll be fine.